Elizabeth Barron, and I'm a virtual reality and advanced visualization technical specialist for Ozlock. And this is Dan Lincoln, who works with uh, Beyond the Five team. And we, what we do is we put together a set of technologies to allow us to get immersed inside any vehicle that we're developing at any point in our product development process. So while we're developing a vehicle, of course, it's an iterative process, we're able to look at the vehicle as a customer would see it at any point in time. So to do that, what we do is we give you a, a headset that has a stereoscopic view of your virtual world. There's markers on the headset that are tracked by the cameras around this room. The vehicle is spatially registered to this room and it's one-to-one -one life size in the room. And what we do is collaborate globally and we share ideas and it's really what uh, we started out when Jeff said it's uh, the marriage of um, art and science and engineering all come together. So if no matter what your discipline is at Ford, if you're a hardcore engineer who's really motivated by Excel spreadsheets and numbers, or if you're a passionate artist who's designing the most beautiful services that uh, are so compelling and people are so excited to look at, when you get in this lab and you look at the technology, you're looking at it all from the same perspective, and everybody understands it. So what we do is we have a lab here in Palo Alto, which is new. Uh, we have a lab in Dearborn, and, which is where our headquarters are, and then we have one in Melbourne, Australia. And then we have satellite centers in uh, Germany, uh, China, India, Mexico, and Brazil. And all those places share information. And so Dan can pop a view up and you'll watch the power wall. Uh, another view will come up. And it's, it could be another location. So we could have Australia immersed at the same time as us and then we're sharing that information. And so another one of those windows could come up with other information. We could have uh, engineering information on how we're going to manufacture that vehicle. And we could have that displayed as well as, as this. So it's a really holistic, integrated approach to vehicle development. It brings the customer's voice into every stage of our product development process and our manufacturing process. And it brings together the manufacturing of our vehicle with the development of the vehicle and the research <laughs> that goes on up front in the research and innovation center. So it's a really nice way of kind of tying it all together. And we're the, you know, I'm the lucky one that gets to do it. <laughs> and so I want to show you. So this is running live right now. There is a full-size GT in the room right now. And so if I come over here and I grab this, you can see it move. And so through here, it's real time. And on this screen, we we slow it and smooth it so that for as an audience member, it's hard to look through some of these eyes in real time. It's, it's we just want to make sure that the experience is nice and smooth. So I wear this, and it's a stereoscopic view of my world. Sorry, well, you know, I might have to take a I'm to show it to you guys. So I'm seeing the GT. And you see what I see through here. And I have tools for my world. So this is a pointer and a flashlight. And if I shine this light, it shines the light on the vehicle. So watch the pointer. So this is the rear of the vehicle. And it is life size. This is, no, this is where the end is. Dan's opened the door. So can you talk to that, Dan? See how the door will go down and up. So we, in our vehicle development process, we'll open and close every interface. We'll look at everything. We'll understand the fit and finish, the manufacturability, and the design. Okay, so you want to close that door for a second? I just want to go to the front. Okay, so sorry. <laughs> I just want you to see it is a life-size vehicle. So I, this is the front. We pushed it back, like normally in the room we would move it forward because there's no sense but to fit everybody. And so now I can get inside the vehicle. And open the door. 
And so now I'm registered to the inside of the GT. So if I look down at my seat, I put this flashlight on the seat. Even though it's not the exact seat, it's spatially registered. So you can kind of tell that, you know, I'm where I should be with respect to the vehicle. And then I can look around and look at the different areas of the vehicle, the climate and the power center and the command center interface. And then another important aspect is looking at visibility. So we use this technology to assess what a person would see when they're driving. And so it's important to understand up vision, so what you would see, like if you pulled up to a light, it, could you see the stoplight? And then what we call down vision, which is looking over the hood. And then uh, obstructions, potentially, at the pillars, which are those you know, the pillars that come down with the glasses. And so we look at all these things, and then we consider the craftsmanship of the vehicle and how like the vents are on the side integrated with the door and how it fits together when it's closed and the, the look of the steering wheel and the you know the powerful feeling that you get when you look at it because it just looks so awesome and so we look at the quality of the vehicle and the perceived quality and then we'll also do some engineering work so Dan can turn on the, the sectioning and I, I'm controlling it with this pointer and I can section through the vehicle and so now I'm looking at the GT and I'm, you know, it's disappearing and coming back. But the, the point of this is the data that we're looking at is our engineered data with the design in it. So when we look at this data and we do real uh, vehicle development studies, we'll have an engine and a powertrain and a, a complete model. And this is a lot of data to produce in real time and show you live and collaborate around the world. So, yeah, oh, switch the, that's cool, Dan. So he just switched the side. And so what he's showing is you can, we can look at any axis. We have tons of flexibility, so we have this great ability to show the vehicle in a ton of different ways really quick. So we can look at different times of day, different options, um, all kinds of stuff in the half hour. <laughs> and where else can you do that? So it's a really efficient, effective way of communicating where we're at and how we're uh, like reaching our milestones and what we need to do next. So that's it. All right, you guys have any questions? <coughs>
means and methods of you know, maybe presenting information when it's needed, or you know, just being more contextually relevant also, right? So um, particularly with driver's assistance, and I think as we move towards autonomy and semi-autonomy and things like that, when you start to feel the vehicle intervening on your behalf, you know, it's a really different sensation. Right? But it's, you know, even manually, Introduce machine intelligence and a new kind of dialogue of what the car can do and what it senses versus what you would do as a human. That's a really good point. And what I would add to that is, you know, if you look at what I take away from that picture, so when you look at that, that's when that driver felt that he needed, right, to do all the things that he wanted to do. And then our challenge is, how do we how do we use technology to 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 rationalize all of that, right? Um, I mean, he didn't have the solution that he needed, right? So he took a lot of screens and pasted them around his car, and we look at that and say, that's probably not ideal. But how do we apply technologies like machine intelligence, like advanced interfaces, to give him what he needs, but to do it in a way that's more compatible with driving? Any other questions? Uh, just one follow-up. If you said that you would design a deployment depending on the car or the driver, like the performance values, you would have more data? I wouldn't you like to do that, right? Um, sure. I think, you know, we, we find people kind of long, they just behave differently in vehicles, and there's such a diversity. And we find people that want to be extremely productive, um, and we find people that want to, they use their in-car time as kind of their time to connect with others, right? I'm going to go through my task list, I'm going to make a lot of phone calls. We find people that just want to be purely entertained, and they want to kind of clear their mind. I've had a long day, I don't want to have to think about work, I just want to clear my mind and have some me time, you know, and reset as I travel, right? So accommodating all of those variations, I think, is what's, what's the challenging piece, right? It can be flexible to Jeff's point of not having them to have to bring in everything in the parts and pieces. But that said, you know, if, if we have multiple passengers in an Explorer or uh, we're you know, it's a fleet vehicle, more popular, you know, a transit connectors or something like that, versus just to get around town Fiesta, versus a high performance vehicle. You know, the drivers behave differently, they kind of have different expectations, they probably live different lifestyles. And again, those those kind of socio and economic and lifestyle oriented things we try to you know, reflect in, in layouts and in functionality. But we also try to choose what we think is the best. You know, the, the most efficient way. Right. And you can change dynamically. <clears throat> dynamically, also, we talk about like the track mode versus the uh, main mode. Sure. Okay, great, great. <clears throat> Just a quick question. Uh, I'm sure that there's a difference in lifestyle between buyers and so your vehicle line executives. For instance, uh, a Lincoln MK. Z, whatever, uh, buyers probably looking for different things in technology and entertainment than the Focus GT buyer. Just a guess on my part. You know, and, and then this car, you know, we, I would assume that it's more of an infotainment minimalist structure, assuming that the car itself is plenty of entertainment. I think that's exactly right. And, and you know, we do try to understand you know, really, what, who are the target buyers and really what the market segmentation is for vehicles. And we try to, we try to understand those customers and use our understanding of them as we progress the design so that we are not designing a one size fits all. I think we're ready to rotate. So, sorry to interrupt, but another question from the audience. Uh, Jeff, you said that you were going to rotate the lab virtual immersion session as well. So, you're going straight here on the left into the garage. Uh, and the lab will be running later if you want to come in and have a virtual immersion session. Pretty cool stuff. See you guys later.